Okay. Um, many students normally have um, have been complaining because they have issues on differentiating between um, terracing and contour plowing in relation to management of soil erosion. So the need for this particular video on environmental management. Um, so first, mm, your syllabus content 3.7, that's on chapter three, uh, has to do with managing soil erosion. So we're just going to look at some of those strategies, but we'll pay more close attention to terracing and contour plowing. So you'll be able to differentiate it in exams. Now in IGCSE exams, they will definitely give you uh, if they want you to describe uh, terracing or contour plowing, the first thing is they'll give you a diagram. And from the diagram, you first they will ask you to identify, ask you to identify. And once you're able to identify, um, you should now be able to describe uh, what is actually taking place. So where most students get issues with, it's um, once you get the identification wrong, obviously, um, the B and C part of that question, there's high possibility you get them wrong. And so what we'll be doing today is let's see how students will be able to differentiate um, between con terracing and contour plowing, which are method of controlling soil erosion. So first, terracing. Terracing prevents the uh, erosion of soil by rainwater on steep slopes. Now, obviously, you know that um, the rate of erosion on steep slope is higher than on gentle slope. Now, if you have a slope, um, a rock or, or a landscape formation in this format, this part here, it's steeper. Just see it as somewhere that is difficult for you to climb through. So you find out that if rain falls here, there will be higher rate of erosion than a gentle slope. So what terrace does is it's trying to alter how water moves down a steep slope so here we have a steep slope and that definitely the rate of erosion on this steep slope will be quite high so the need for terracing or also contour plowing so let's see terrace in terrace we look at first in a natural landscape this is a natural landscape and the first photo let me call it photo a or photograph a now in photograph a you find out that water runs down increasing in speed and also volume carrying soil in the runoff so that means in a natural situation there will be high high runoff surface runoff so obviously there will be high movement of soil particles so definitely high rate of erosion but however in a terrace slope which is now photograph b photograph b in a terrace slope now land is cut, look at land, cut into flat surfaces or steps. So you can actually climb, you can see it, there are steps, just normal steps, like uh, your, your, your house, you, you construct a step at home and you're able to climb through it from here. You can climb to the next step, climb to the next step, climb to the next step. So that is how terrace is done. Uh, uh, land cuts into flat surface or step to reduce the slope. So this will help to reduce the slope, thereby it will lead to low runoff. So the rate at which the water is moving will reduce, thereby the amount of sand particles that will be washed down will reduce, thereby reducing the rate of soil erosion. So land is cut into flat surfaces, surfaces or step to reduce slope, which therefore reduces the speed of surface runoff. Uh, so what will happen? The soil is held back by the terrace. Now, it's often used for cultivation because you can cultivate on the uh, stepwise uh, part because it's now easy for you, to, you yourself to be able to climb through because it's just a step. Now, but in the case of contour plowing, there are two key words you need to know, which are ridges and trough. Now, plowing of land allow the contours in a parallel way. Now, so you see, in a plow, in contour plowing, you have ridges and trough, and troughs here refer to as furrows. Now, it's just like you are creating an alternative path for the water to move instead of moving back downwards. You, 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 you construct like many channels with uh, levees. Now, in this case, these are the ridges. Let me, let me okay, let, if I use this first diagram here, these are ridges. So you can cultivate on them. And this part here 
forms the trenches or the troughs. Troughs. So obviously, if you look at it here, this part we form the um, ridges. These are ridges, and this part here is troughs. Now, this trough is, is, a is, is, is a depression. So, if you look at a river, a river channel usually have um, two banks, two banks, and the water flow through this channel. Now, once you are able to have a raised bank, so what we cause flooding is if this water is able to fill up the bank and flow to the heads of uh, flow to the floodplains. But if you have a raised bank, which is now the ridges here, you find that more of the water will just flow through the channel without splitting out. So each furrow holds water and prevents large torrent of water running down the slope. So instead of the water moving down in this format, down the slope, it will be difficult because these ridges here will form an embankment, more like uh, a man-made levees. So the water will now have no choice than to flow through the furrows or trenches, thereby preventing the downward movement of this water and also reducing erosion. Now, preventing formation of also gullies and runoff of the topsoil. Now, useful for all gradient of slope. So this is useful for all gradients, whether it is uh, a gentle or steep slope. Now, that's the difference about terrace and contours. Now, let's just browse through other methods of uh, soil erosion, uh, controlling soil erosion. First, bonds. Another one is bonds. Um, bonds are artificial banks, you see what I was saying, at the edges of a growing space to hold back water. So you can use um, boulders, sands, um, stones to create artificial banks along this slope so the water will just flow through this channel. That's bonds. It's useful for crops that require moist soil like rice, so it will be able to hold the water behind. Um, it increases the quantity and fertility of the soil also because there will not be leaching of nutrient. Now, we also have wind breaks. Now, this happens when you use wind breaks when uh, the soil erosion is caused by wind. You know, uh, the major cause of soil erosion is uh, when you have wind, you have um, water. And all this will be stimulated when there is deforestation, which can be due to overgrazing, overcultivation. So, and the soil will now be what exposed to either wind, water, and sometimes ice to move the soil from a particular point to another. So, you trees here and vegetation can act as wind breaks and uh, to reduce the speed of wind to cause soil erosion. Uh, next, you can have uh, maintaining water, maintaining vegetation cover. Uh, so, sowing uh, legumes, leguminous plant, uh, immediately after a crop has been harvested will help to prevent soil being exposed and prevent soil erosion. And also, leguminous plants, you remember they are rich in nitrogen, so they will add nutrients to the soil, making the soil more fertile. Then, you can have no dig method. That means, you see, this is the soil. You don't dig the soil, you don't, you don't, you don't ridge it. All you do is you just add a manure and you plant on top of it, leaving the soil the way it is so it will be compacted and thereby there will be reduction in soil erosion in that process. Okay, that's all I, I, I meant to look at and the major concept is to differentiate between terrace and 